How's it going YouTube? Today I'll be covering mean variance portfolio optimization in MATLAB and this is just a procedure put forth by Markowitz. Standard procedure that you'll see in a lot of graduate level finance classes. I'm sure if you take an MBA or start a CFA program you'll probably be introduced to this as well. But so the main idea of this is that if we have some stocks we know we want to invest in, in this case GM, Ford, and Caterpillar will be our three stocks. So we know we want to invest in these stocks and let's say we also know that we have some return that we want to get. So we want to get 6%. Well, how much money should we put in each of these stocks? And really what we're going to be looking at is how much weight should we put in each of these stocks? Should we put 40% of our money in GM, 20% in Ford, so on? How do we know? So really this just comes down to a constrained optimization problem. And the goal is to minimize the variance. And in this case, the variance represents our risk. We want to minimize our risk while still getting that expected return and while still investing in each of these three stocks. And during this process we'll incorporate some constraints, but okay, so let's get going. So I have some starter code here for us. These are the adjusted close prices of those three stocks, several years worth of data. And then I have them all combined into a single matrix and then finally I'm computing the actual returns here and these are in percentage form. A lot of times when you see an example of uh, Markowitz or portfolio optimization done, they're going to be using yearly returns, but the procedure is going to be the same in MATLAB. So the first big thing that we need to do is we need to calculate our summary statistics. And the two big inputs that are required for the optimizer is that we need to compute the covariance matrix and the expected returns. So let's just do uh, the expected returns first. For the expected returns, there's several ways you can do this. All I'm going to do is just take the mean of the past returns. So there's the mean of the past returns, and now I'm also going to compute the covariance matrix and just the cov function of the returns. So now that we have our two big inputs, the next thing that we can do is set up for the optimization. And the first big thing that we need to do is we need to figure out what return do we expect out of this? So we need to pick something that's feasible. We can't pick something that's way out of the bounds of the highest daily average return that these three stocks have gotten in the past. So let's just go ahead and take a look at the means. So remember, these are in percent form, but they're only daily returns. So they should be pretty small. So 0.06% looks like the biggest one. So to make sure it's feasible, we need to pick something within the range of these. So I think 0.04% would be a decent expected return. So I'm going to say the mean of the portfolio that we hope to get is 0.04%, and that is an, a required daily return. So we're saying whatever weights we put in here, we need to get 0.04% daily return out of our portfolio. So believe it or not, we're almost done already. The next big thing that we have to do is use fmincon, which says that we're going to create a constrained minimization problem. And it has all these parameters, which we're going to define one by one up here. So the first of these that we need to define is the function. So we need to say, what function are we minimizing? And the function that we're going to min be minimizing is going to be the variance of the portfolio. We want the variance of the portfolio to be as small as possible and still get that 0.04% return. Well, then how do you compute the variance of the actual portfolio? Here I'm going to let x be the weights, and the x is essentially going to be the vector that's going to be changing. There will be three weights, one for each stock, within the vector x, and those weights are going to change, and then this optimizer is going to figure out the optimal weights that's going to give us this minimum variance. But so the actual formula then for the variance of the portfolio is just going to be the weights times the covariance matrix times the transpose of the weights. So again, this says this is our function that we want to minimize. You're going to do it by changing x. And again, this is just the variance of the portfolio. So let's move on to the next parameter. The next parameter is just your starting guess. So what do you think it's going to be? Well, I really don't know what it's going to be. So I'm just going to put one third in for each of them. Then we can move on to the more tricky ones, which are 
This first one is a set of constraints where we have some matrix times the weights is going to be less than B, less than or equal to B, excuse me, and then we have some matrix times the weights is going to be equal to B. So we have a less than or equal to, and then we have an equality requirement. These bottom two are just going to be the lower bound and upper bound on each weight. And so it's at this point that you really need to start catering the optimization problem to what you exactly want to do for your problem or your question or whatever you're trying to solve here. So I don't have any constraints that I'm going to put in for this, for this less than or equal to b vector. So I do have some equality constraints though, and here are my con equality constraints. It's just going to be one on one, then I'm going to have the mean, which is a vector, remember it's the mean of those three stocks. And then for the results, I'm going to require one, and then on the next row is just going to be the resulting portfolio return that I want. He might be saying, well, what does this mean? How is this a constraint? And it's easier to view in Excel. So I created this matrix A, which is a two by three. We have our weights, which is a three by one. And when you multiply those, you get a two by one result, which is B. So the first row in A represents the first constraint. Well, these one-on-ones get multiplied by all the weights in X, which is going to give us a single resulting value when you add them all up. So essentially all this is saying is add up all of these weights and the, uh, the summation of all those weights has to be one. So all the weights just have to add up to one, which makes sense, right? We can't invest more money than we have. We can't invest less money than we have. So just all the weights have to add up to one. The next thing that I have is I have all those mean returns that we calculated earlier. So these are just the historical returns over the date range that we have. And now what I'm saying is that when you take the weight, multiply it by this expected return, it's got to equal that return that we want to get out of this portfolio. And the portfolio return that we want is 0.04% per day. So when you multiply it by the weights that are optimal, it has to give us that. So those are the two constraints that I'm requiring at least in terms of equality. Now when you go and look at the lower bound and upper bound, these are a bit easier to visualize conceptually. So I just want the lower bound to be zero. So you can't short sell in this case. If you wanted to be able to short sell, you could put a negative in there. And then I want the upper bound to be 0 0.5. So I don't want more than half of my portfolio to end up being one stock. So. 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, that looks good. Okay, so believe it or not now, we're already done. We just need to make a call to fmincon, which says, hey, go ahead and complete this constraint minimization problem. Again, we're putting in the function, which is just the portfolio variance. We're gonna go ahead and minimize that. Remember, it is a minimization. Then we're going to say, hey, start at this value, satisfy this less than or equal to constraint, this equality constraint, and make sure that the answer is within these bounds. So once we run this, it's going to provide two returns here. We have the actual weights or the values from X. And then we have the actual portfolio variance that was computed and minimized. So let's just go ahead and take a look at the weights and make sure that they make sense. So the first one is 28.69%, the second one is 24.88, and the third one is 46.43. So it looks like we're putting most of our money 46% of it in that third stock. So does that make sense? Let's take a look at the means. Remember, these are the historical means, or in our case, what we expect to get in the future. And it looks like we're putting most of our money in stock number three, which also has the highest return. So that does make sense, right? We wanna put, if we're trying to get a 4% daily return, then we're going to put it in a stock that's over 6%. And then these are essentially just going to be for diversification. Now before I go, I want to point out some known issues with the procedure that I just went through. So first, the historical returns might not be your best bet for calculating the future returns. And maybe you want to do some fundamental analysis and say, hey, I don't think that Ford's future return is going to match its historical return, so I'm going to put that into the optimizer instead. And that might work better. The other thing is that research shows that there are many other ways to compute this covariance matrix and several ways do a much better job than just pulling the covariance matrix off the historical returns. These are really the two big things you have to put into the optimizer and depending upon how you calculate them and where you're getting your values really kind of changes some of the weights that you might get out of the optimizer. 
So one more thing that I'll show you here is that from this, you can use this procedure to calculate an actual nice little mean variance frontier for your set of stocks. And what you're about to see, I think there's about six of the stocks and I essentially ran, here we go, I essentially ran 300 different required returns for the portfolio and then plotted them against the variance. So we have required return over here, variance on the x-axis, and you can see my nice little uh, mean variance frontier here. So then when you graph the risk-free rate down here and map it to the optimal portfolio, then you actually get the, uh, the mean variance portfolio, including lending and borrowing at the risk-free rate. So cool little exercise that you can do. It's really cool if you do it for the stocks that you own, and it'll tell you the actual optimal portfolio that you should be owning. All right, but so that's it for this video. If you go and use this and end up losing a bunch of money on stocks, it's not my fault. But as always, thanks for watching anyway. Have a good one, guys.